Do you think that as part of that redemption, you need to apologize at all for what happened, what you did? Absolutely, and I have apologized and I will continue apologizing. I am devastated, not for myself, but for my institution and the people I worked with. The very first thing I did when I was first arrested was say, I am sorry beyond words. I said it through my lawyers, but that is what I said. During my trial, I said I was sorry repeatedly. And I wasn't, these are not just devices. It's how I feel. I failed. I made mistakes. Do you think that the culture that you found yourself in um, has changed now and that it couldn't happen again? Unfortunately, I have to say that the, ex the conversations I've had with people in the industry over the last year, through the conferences I've spoken at, the seminars I've been involved with, everyone, the young traders, the senior executives, everyone in the industry is looking, still looking for a way to change culture within the industry. We still have so much work to do to get the finance industry in a position where it's trusted by society, that it's contributing something consistently that helps society move forward in a positive way. Has behavior changed in banking enough? No, absolutely not. Um, I think the young people I've spoken to, former colleagues I've spoken to, are still struggling with the same issues, the same conflicts, the same pressures to achieve no matter what. And we know where conflict goes. Where the conflict comes is where people fall into this grey zone. And so I think it can absolutely happen again, especially as we go into what could possibly be the next phase of the great financial crisis over the next sort of 12 to 18 to 24 months. And looking back now, do you think of yourself as a criminal? Um, I don't think I'm a criminal. It's a label that I have. Um, you made a terrible mistake. You made a, a sequence of terrible choices. But your intentions were always in the right place. I accept that I was found guilty of a crime that had dishonesty central to it. You were called a liar in the I trial. I was called a liar and I accept that I lied. I accept that I was dishonest in the way in which I was doing what I was doing. I mean, how did, you know, the son of a senior a figure in the United Nations, you went to a well-renowned Quaker school, end up being photographed in handcuffs, being taken to and from court, and ended up in prison. I, it was a shock. Um, what was most difficult for me was um, thinking about my friends and family um, and how they were perceiving it. Throughout the entire process, you stop thinking about yourself. Um, or maybe that's just the way I'm built. But my concern was never about me. It was never about the pain or the embarrassment or the, the things that were being said about me. It was the impact that those things had on my friends and family. That was the thing that was most difficult.